Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today I'm going to be doing some more restoration work on my old 1990s copy of Hero Quest. In particular, we're going to be looking at the two tables. And if we look at these particular examples, you can see that they suffer from these same sort of problems that I had with the treasure chest, which I have already restored in a previous video. We have cracked card, we have um, some poorly applied paint on the end pieces, and one of them is missing a reinforcing bar. So we're going to deal with all of those issues. You can also see that um, the card elements are slightly distended. They aren't crisp folds, and so you get bulgy sides. And we're going to do something to resolve that as well. The first thing we have to do, of course, is dismantle the piece, being as careful as we can. And you can see that the end pieces have some nubs. So I'm going to use a mold line remover, and I'm just going to scrape those away. So I have here the reinforcing bar from one of the tables and I'm going to use this as a template for creating my own. And luckily I have a piece of cylindrical frame here, some sprue from Rise of the Orcs, which is exactly the right um, sort of size for what I need. So I'm going to cut off a length of that and I'm going to trim off all these extra bits that we don't need. And then what I'm doing here is I'm just using my clippers and I'm going to position them round about um, where I need it to be. And this is kind of like using wire strippers. I am applying pressure to the clippers, but not enough to cut all the way through. And then I'm just spinning the piece of sprue to score a line, um, which indicates round about where I need it to thin down to fit into the little um, hole on the end piece of the table. And then what I'm doing here is I'm very carefully just clipping small amounts of the sprue off. And I'm going to work my way all the way around so that um, I create a narrower piece that goes up to that line that we have scored. You have to be careful here not to take off too much. And of course, you have to be careful not to cut your finger off. But just working all the way around the piece of sprue, four cuts will do it. And you need to make sure your clippers are pretty sharp for this. And then you can just use a file just to smooth that off a little bit. And then I'm just going to do a dry fit test here and you can see that that fits nicely. And of course we will have to do the same at the other end. And when we've done that, I'm just going to use a file and I'm going to uh, file down any of the bits that we had to clip little um, parts of the sprue off to make sure we've got a nice cylindrical piece. With that done, we're going to look at this piece of card. And as I mentioned earlier, you can see that the card is kind of dried out over 30 years. The folds aren't as nice as they were. The sides are sort of bending outwards. And this is something we can resolve. We want to refold it so that we've got nice crisp edges. But that does create some problems. Because the card is so dry, if you just try and bend it now, it's going to crack. The top surface, the actual printed part that has the, uh, the wood design on it, that will just split open. Furthermore, it will delaminate. The actual layers of the corrugation in the card will just split apart. So what I'm doing here is um, I'm just running a knife along each of the fold lines on the inside, just to give it a little bit more flex to work with. Of course, we don't want to cut all the way through here. We're just putting a score line in. And then I've put it on a piece of tissue paper and I'm going to spray it with some water. Or in fact, I'm using scented fabric softener because we want the card to soften up again. We want it to be more pliable. And eventually, um, once you've let that soak in a little bit, you can very carefully refold the card. You have to be really careful because if you just go at it all in one go, like I say, you will crack the laminate on the front. You will start splitting the card. Um, so you just have to be careful with this. Take your time. 
but by gradually working it, you can improve the folds and get nice, nice properly folded edges on the table, which you don't really have to do. It's um, not a massive thing, but I wanted to do it. And then when it is completely dry, we need to seal these edges. These edges are visible and they do allow moisture into the card, so we can seal them with a bit of PVA. So what I've got here is I've got my texture tool, my Games Workshop texture tool, but any flat implement will do. And I'm just going to apply PVA glue down those edges. If you get any over the sides, you can just wipe it off with a damp piece of kitchen roll. And I'm going to do these edges as well, although these edges will be hidden inside the end pieces, the plastic end caps. But it's worth doing. While that PVA is drying, I have spray undercoated the plastic end pieces um, with Chaos Black. And I'm now going to apply some leather brown. I'm going to apply two coats of this. Um, just thin coats, just to get a base coat of brown down over the ends. And then while that leather brown is drying, I've gone back to the card element of the table. And what I've done is I've run um, PVA glue along those score lines that I made earlier. And that's just going to reinforce those. It's going to seal those score lines back up. Going back to the plastic here, we can see I have got my leather brown down and we are now going to apply Agrax Earthshade. And this is going to bring out all the detail in those plastic end pieces. While our Agrax Earthshade is drying, we are going to apply some paint to any areas of the card where it has cracked. Um, I did this previously on the treasure chests, and what I'm doing is I'm mixing Balor Brown and Fire Dragon Bright, and then I'm trying to roughly color match the print on the table. And then whenever there is a, a crack in the, in the pattern, wherever there is some white card showing through, I'm just applying that paint. And you may need a couple of coats, you may need to feather it, blend it a little bit. I'm not being too specific about it. I watched a YouTube video the other day with someone who was able to color match anything. Um, they could color match skin tones, um, even like tomato skins. It was brilliant. Um, but I don't have that kind of skill. Um, I don't have that kind of color recognition to be able to accurately match up the colors. So I've just kind of tried to make an orangey browny color and um, apply it where it needs to go. And once it's all dry and once the whole thing's been given a spray coat of varnish, it doesn't show up too much um, and it looks much better than the white card showing through. I'm also painting the underside of the cards because those areas actually will be visible. And now I'm going back to the plastic end pieces and we're going to do a dry brush of Monster Brown. This is going to do two things. It's going to help define the details. It's going to highlight the raised areas, but it's also going to make the table look a little bit dusty and old. And you can see here that I've used a dark brown for the plastic pieces rather than trying to match the more orange, brighter color of the printed card elements. Technically, the plastic pieces should probably be the same sort of color because they are supposed to represent the end pieces of the planks that the tables are made out of. But I wanted to keep it in a darker brown because when it's all done, it'll look a little bit more like the unpainted table, the way that it would have been originally assembled when it first came out of the box with the dark plastic end pieces and then the printed card. Um, so it's kind of like, although it's a painted piece now, it will still have that sort of hero quest feel to it. I don't know if I'm explaining myself very well there, but um, it makes sense to me. I wanted to keep the essence of hero quest as an out of the box experience whilst having some paint on it. And with that done, we are ready to assemble the final thing. So we have our two end caps, our piece of card and our support bar. And we have to very carefully push in our card element, which now has nice straight edges and sharper corners than it had before. And then we have to attach our support bar. And I will put some glue on these afterwards to hold it all together. I'll just use a drop of plastic glue. 
So here's the other end cap going on. And it just needs to be wiggled to line it all up. And then it should push together quite nicely. And that is our finished table. Ready to get a spray coat of Munitorum varnish. So this is what they looked like originally. This is one of those restoration jobs where it doesn't look dramatically different, but this is the before and this is the after. Really, we've just got straighter edges. We've removed the, uh, the paint that I didn't like on there. We've touched up any cracks in the cardboard. We've put a new reinforcing bar on the bottom and we're gonna give it a spray coat of varnish and it'll just um, hopefully survive um, for another 30 years but that's it for this particular video thank you so much for watching if you've enjoyed it please consider pressing the like button if you have really enjoyed it please consider subscribing if you don't already do so and hopefully i'll see you all again very soon bye bye everyone bye bye